Okay, so hopefully you've got this computer setup um, thing done. So you've installed the tidyverse package and watched the video maybe using RStudio. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my RStudio icon. Start RStudio. There it is. Um, I'm going to create a project. I'm not gonna talk about, that's in the other video, um, why I'm gonna do this, but it will make your life a lot easier. So um, by default, it's gonna turn up in the documents thing, that's fine. I'm gonna call this project, not that. What's going on? Oh, accidentally hit the function. Let's try that again. There we go. COVID-19. Studio is going to switch to the project. If you've just installed R in R Studio, your version of R will be higher than mine. It'll still be 3.6 point something, so that's fine. Okay, here we go. So now we're in a folder called COVID-19 inside my documents folder, and we're kind of ready to go. Um, let's see. Whoops, I misplaced something. Be right back. Nope. All right, fine. Let's do it this way. Not that. File, mm, open file. I'm just gonna grab the file from the blog post so that I've got a reference. Oh, content, where's content? There it is. Um, this is the thing I wanna walk through line by line with you. And this is all taking far too long, but you can see uh, that This is not the R script that I'm going to use. This will be the one for referral. There we go. Okay, so one of the advantages of teaching coding by doing coding live is that I make mistakes. And the value of me making mistakes is that, is that you learn that it's okay to make mistakes and also a little bit about how to figure out what's gone wrong. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to this plus button, you're gonna create a new R script. This is just an empty text file that's going to have code and, and it will know that this is R code that's in here. So it'll light it up um, as expected. Um, the first thing we wanna do is use the library function. It's a function because it's got these two parentheses after it and to load the tidyverse package. This is actually a sort of a shortcut to loading a whole bunch of packages, but we're gonna use most of them, so save ourselves some typing. We're just gonna do that. So if I go library, library tidyverse, now I'm just gonna do command on a Mac or control on a PC, run or enter, sorry. That runs it. You can see that it's done a bunch of things. It's attached some packages and it's notified us that there are some conflicts. That's okay, we need one more package, which is part of the tidyverse, but not loaded automatically. It's called lubridate, because it lubricates the use of dates. And, and that's all good. Okay, so the first problem that we have when doing an analysis in R is getting the data and um, in this case, the data for the uh, COVID outbreak, I'm going to grab from a website uh, called github.com and from a repository on that website where um, the Johns Hopkins University people are putting together uh, the, the um, all the data that they're using for their nice dashboard that they have. It's tracking 
the emergence of COVID-19 across the globe. <clears throat> They've been kind enough to make the data publicly available. Um, it's updated daily, but sometimes, uh, usually late in the afternoon uh, or early evening, but what I've noticed is that sometimes there's bugs and so it takes a little while. If you try and use the data right after they post it, sometimes it doesn't work very well. By the following morning, it seems to be clean. So the first thing we're gonna do is use this paste function because there's a really long string here. Um, and if you're following along, I highly recommend that you just copy and paste this from the blog um, because it's a lot. GitHub user content.com. Okay, so that's the website. We're going to the raw form of the file. CSSE is the computer or complex systems and science or something like that. GIS and data. That's the user. And then their COVID 19 is the repository. Now we dig into the master branch. Oh, this is GitHub gobbledygook that you don't really need to know. 19, it's not usual to pull data off GitHub like this. It's sort of an unusual kind of instance. What have I done? Um, but it seems to be working for the moment, so we'll go ahead and do this time series. And this is the actual file name, <laughs> finally. So this file just has the number of what they're calling confirmed cases in it. Okay, and then set equals two quotes. So what it's going to do, if I run this now, if we look at JHU, oops, JHU URL, it's just pasted all those individual strings together and given us a long string like that. Um, yeah, you could just type it all out as one long string as well. SEP is an argument that basically says, take these pieces and don't put anything in between them, just stick them together. All right, now we can, there's a function in the tidyverse called read underscore CSV. And we can just give it, normally we would use it to read a file, but we can just give it this URL and it will pull that CSV file off of that URL and turn it into an object. So it's a, it's a function. Don't get, there's another base R function, read.csv. That's, I, I believe that will also work here, but it does make some assumptions for you that are not always true. And so read underscore CSV is a little safer in my experience. So what I wanna do is I wanna take the output of this function and I want to um, save it to a object and I'm gonna call that object jhu underscore wide and you'll see why in a moment. So if I just control command enter, you get a little message here. So it's pulled everything in as a double except for these. And we can take a look at this thing. It's 463 rows and 59 variables. So if I click that, we can see what it looks like. So what they've done is they've got this province state, which is sort of internal to a country, and then there's country slash region, and there's a cent lat and long, which is sort of a centroid for each of those points, and then there's the confirmed case number. Now these are cumulative cases, so this Thailand, first day of the data is on the 22nd of January, Thailand had two cases, 23rd, they had three, and so on. If we scroll all the way over here, we're getting data up to the 7th of March. Oh, because it's only showing us up to column 50. It hasn't, doesn't like 
too wide data sets. So that's okay. This data set is not really in a shape that we can use very effectively. And there's a few problems that we have to solve. Um, one of the first ones is that these two um, column names have the slash in them and R does not like slashes. So we're gonna try and get rid of those. The other problem is we really want a column that says date and a column that says cases. So that we, instead of having this long wide thing, we've got a long skinny thing. I'm sorry, instead of having this wide but very narrow piece of uh, uh, thing, we're gonna end up with a wide one. Okay, so let's try and do those two steps. But before I do that, I'm going to take another step here, which is to save this object. JHU wide, and I'm gonna put it in a folder. There we go. And I'm gonna give it a file name. So uh, the file name is data, because that's the folder it's going into, slash, uh, I'm gonna call it JHU wide. And I'm gonna put the date on this so that what is the date today? 17th. And it's called an RDA file, R for R data. So it's going to take this object and it's going to save it to this file name. Oops, I need to say. There we go. So if I look over here now, there's the file. And now I can do load, just copy this into here. And I'm going to do highlight all of that. And then under, let's see, where is it? Code, there's an option to comment, uncomment lines. And I'm just gonna click that and that's gonna comment out those lines. So now I can run this code again the next time, and instead of going to the website and downloading the data, it's just going to load the data from this saved file. The reason I'm doing that is because, well, two reasons. First is, I don't wanna hit the server with a request for this file every time I run the code from scratch. And as you'll see, I tend to run the code from scratch a lot because that's one of the ways to figure out get backed out of errors. So that reduces the load on the server, which is just good, good practice. But the other reason it's good practice is that this data set is not static. It's being updated all the time. So if I start working on this file and then I pull another file down in three hours, what's happened a couple of times is that it, everything's broken. <laughs> so what it was like three hours ago is not what it's like now. And so then I can't do the work that I'm that I'm trying to do so. Uh, so that's kind of annoying. Okay, so now we've got our object, JHU wide. We've, we've archived it. Let's do a couple of steps here and see what we want to do. JHU wide, I'm gonna start with that object, and then I'm gonna use a pipe. And on a Mac, this is Shift Command M. On a PC, it's Shift Control M. What this pipe does is it says, take this object that's on the left or whatever this thing is that's on the left and feed it to whatever is on the right as the first argument. So the thing that's on the right is usually a function. And in this case, it's a function called rename because what we wanna do is rename those first two columns. And we're gonna call the first one province. No Canadian bias here. And, um, province slash state is the thing that we're trying to fix. And then we have, then we're gonna try and get rid of that. Thing. So country, region, we use an underscore there. I'm not actually sure why we need region in there, but whatever, we'll keep it for now. Equals, what is it now? It's country slash region. Okay, so let's run that and see what it, see what it spits out. Oof. 
So there's just the top little bit of it. We've got our variables have been renamed. All the rest of these are um, the same. So now you can see we've got missing values for province, and then we've got Thailand, Japan, blah, blah, blah. And some places have provinces like Canada, Australia, and the US, and others don't. Okay, so we're gonna take that renamed thing and we're going to feed it to a new function. And this function is the one that's going to get us our variables, uh, these things into a date column and the cases over here into a cases column. And the function we're gonna use is called pivot because what we're doing is trying to pivot this wide table and we're going to pivot longer. We're going from wide to long. Okay, so pivot longer and the first argument is going to be our data frame. So we don't have to specify that. It's gonna come from the pipe. And then we have to tell it which columns to pivot. And in this case, it's actually easier to say which columns we don't want. So we're gonna say, we don't want to pivot province. We don't want to pivot country region. And we don't want to pivot lat or long. Pivoting is a really critical, uh, either longer or wider, is something that I, you end up doing a lot with data analysis. These functions are a little, there's, other, there's lots of ways to do this, but these functions are pretty well designed. So um, we're gonna stick with them. They're a little new to me, so I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna end up making mistakes. Um, names two is pretty important. This is where these are the, the variables that are gonna be pivoted. So that's these dates across the top. We wanna say, what is that column gonna be called? And I'm gonna call that date. And then the values, which are in there, we're gonna say values two. We're gonna call that one cumulative cases. All right, let's see what happens. Damn, it worked. Okay, so we've now got 25,000 rows <laughs> and six columns. Okay, so we went from wide to long. So now each country is basically a time series starting with the 22nd and going down to the to March 7, 16th, because today's the 17th. Yeah. Okay. So now we're getting somewhere. Now we can start to, um, this data is now in a format that we can actually start working with. Cumulative cases is in the right format. It's a double. Date is being loaded as a character. So we're gonna wanna change that. So we need to pipe, take this result and pipe it to a function called mutate. And in mutate, I'm going to do, 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 do. I want to mutate means change one of the variables. I could either put a new variable name here, or in this case, I'm just gonna change it in place because I just wanna set. So if I change date to a date, I wanna change that character string to a date time object. So date, and this is where lubridate is coming in. This is one of the lubridate functions. M for month, D for day, Y for year, date. So you can see that we've got, this is the month, January, day, year. And so MDY is just gonna say, it's gonna tell it to look for values that are date, months, days, and years separated by something. So we will do that. Now you can see it's changed the format here to a date and it's now doing it the other way around. This is the ISO standard way of representing a date, year, month, day. 
The advantage of this is that they, as character strings, they sort properly. All right, so that's got her date. Now we just want to pick out the one country that we want. So let's do Italy. So to pick out an individual country, we're going to do filter, which filters our data frame and returns rows where we've specified some um, specified some uh, value and wherever those or some condition, wherever that condition is true, we're going to get those rows. Where that condition is false, we're going to leave those rows behind. So in this case, what we want is country, region, and the logical comparison operator here for equality is equals equals. It's important to have two equals. If you put one, it'll get confused and it'll throw an error. And we want it equal to Italy. Okay. So now you can see we've got down to um, 55 rows, just the observations for Italy starting on the 22nd. And let's see what the end looks like. See, we've got some cumulative cases here, zero until they had their first cases on January 31st. So let's try this. Uh, tail. Oh, no, that's not good. I haven't saved this object as anything. So that's going to cause issues for me here. Okay, let's, let's start saving this. So let's go Italy. I'm going to call it Italy because that way I know exactly what's in that object and it's the confirmed number of cases. All right, we're getting close. Um, what I want to do now is actually it was cool. Italy is quite a bit easier because this data set's not breaking Italy down by, by provinces or states or I don't even know what they call them in Italy. Anyway, the subdivisions of Italy are not being broken down. So I don't have to worry about a lot of the steps I did for the US. So what I want to do is I want to find out not the cumulative cases, but what are called the incident cases, the number of new cases on any particular day. That's what we're going to focus on for now. So let's do this this way. Filter country region equals Italy. And so we're going to mutate again because we're calculating a new variable. And the variable is going to be called incident cases. And um, the function we're going to use is called diff, which is going to calculate the difference between each row. So let's see what that ends up looking like. Diff cumulative cases. Oops. Column incident cases must be length 55, the number of rows, or one, not 54. All right, let's see if I can figure out why this is happening. Why am I only getting 54 out of diff? And how do I fix it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this without the line that caused the error. That, so just by highlighting only up to here, it doesn't run this code. Now, I want to do JHU, well, not JHU, why do I want Italy? Italy confirmed cumulative cases. So there's my vector. Oh gosh, look at those numbers. Jesus. Okay, and now what I want to do is this function diff. What's going on? Zero, two, one, seventeen, and on upwards from there. Oh, because the differences, there's one less difference, right? So, uh, so this one here is the difference between those two. 
That's what I want at the end. That's the number of new cases on this day. So what I need to do is stick a zero on the front. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We use the C for concatenate function. And this just takes whatever its arguments are and sticks them together into a vector. So if I do C, zero, and then diff, it's gonna take my differences and then add a zero at the front. And that's gonna make it the right length and make sure these differences are lined up correctly with where we want them. And if I click there, I can see that's there, but I need, oh, I need one more parentheses. This is really tricky with parentheses and RStudio does a nice job of highlighting where you're at. So right now, if I've got my cursor there, that's matching that one. If I cursor in, it matches that one, that one. So that's helpful. Okay. Italy confirmed that ran. Let's take a look. So it looks like February 21st is where the cases really started to grow rapidly. Um, so we'll sort of see what happens. There's a bit of a bump in here. There was no updating of uh, Italy on the 12th. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but so that means this number is probably too big. So some of these actually happened here, but we don't have that data. So that's okay. We can live with that. All right, so I'm gonna end this video here because it's nice if they're short um, and that's already, this one's already probably too long. In the next video, we'll make a graph.